Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we will continue our discussion with the IoT technologies. So far we have discussed about wireless sensor networks, about uh, cloud computing and big data. So now is the turn of embedded systems, okay? the key technologies that are involved in making the concept of IoT possible. Okay? So embedded system, so what is an embedded system, what, what is the basic uh, definition of an embedded system? So basically uh, it is a combination, a group of hardware and software elements, basic hardware devices and software means programs which is designed to achieve a certain objective, a specific purpose or it can be uh, multiple purposes, multiple objectives. Depending on that, the complexity of the design of the embedded system varies. So it can either function as an independent system, like I said, depending on the objective, what is the end objective, it can function as an independent system or it may be a part of a larger system, okay? S smaller subsystems, we can say. So, it all depends on the objective. So, here uh, the embedded system, when we are talking about, it is basically in the form of an integrated circuit, which consists of thousands and thousands of small circuit elements, and uh, it is uh, uh, the commands, what is the objective, it functions on the basis of the programs, okay, software which is uh, installed in it. So examples of embedded systems can vary from simple examples, let us say digital watches or for smartphones or microwaves, washing machines, any, any appliance nowadays which is, uh, which we call smart devices it has embedded system as part, as an integral part of its whole functioning. So basically the block diagram of an embedded system is something like this. So it is very much similar to a sensor system which we have discussed in sensors, transducers, instrumentation. So it is very much similar to that. So here the block diagram involves the uh, hardware and software elements. So first we have the sensors, here we have only a single sensor but it can consist of uh, multiple sensors uh, as we have discussed in the wireless sensor networks. So everything is related, okay, here for simplicity I have included only one sensor, a single but in reality, multiple sensors are used and the block diagram is very complex. So you can think of it as multiple of these block diagrams connected one after another, okay. So first we have the sensor, okay, which is used for measurement of various physical, chemical, mechanical, electrical, optical, magnetic parameters, okay, and it gives the output in electrical form. Now. This sensor output, it is generally in analog form, okay, electrical but analog form. As we have to give it to the input of the microcontroller which responds only to logic levels, logic 1 or logic 0, okay, binary values. For that, we have to use a analog to digital converter in between which converts it into digital form logic high or logic low, 1 or 0. So depending on the requirements of the microcontroller, which uh, voltage level it responds to, the analog to digital converter, it converts it into that form and it is given to the microcontroller. Now depending on the software, the program which is installed, which is saved in the memory, the microcontroller refers to those instructions and depending on that, it functions to give certain outputs. Now, 
the output of the microcontroller is also in digital form. So, we have to use another converter which is digital to analog converter which converts the output the, the digital output of the microcontroller into analog form. Now that is again given to actuator. So actuator what they do is that they convert the output of the microcontroller into suitable control action. It can be movement, rotatory, linear, on and off, uh, sliding, anything depending on that we have discussed about actuators uh, in the electrical machines section also in sensors transducers instrumentation also in process control so we have discussed about actuators so basically it converts the output of the microcontroller into suitable movement basically it involves movement it can be sliding movement it can be rotatory movement it can be linear movement it can be basic a basic simple on and off of a switch like that so here we will discuss some examples with the help of which you will have a good idea what uh, uh, how in various systems this embedded system technology is used okay so for example let us consider the automatic lighting system which is used in smart home automation so here uh, the sensor which will be used is photo detector not only a single sensor will be used multiple sensors will be used at different locations in the house which will measure the light intensity so basically the idea is when uh, evening approaches sunlight slowly starts diminishing the photo detector it measures the sunlight intensity and when it falls below a certain threshold value it gives signal to the microcontroller through the analog to digital converter and then the microcontroller has the threshold values below which if the sensor light intensity falls it commands the relay the electric relay to automatically turn on the lighting system in the house so when evening approaches and sunlight slowly starts diminishing the lighting system in the house automatically gets turned on similarly when dawn approaches early morning then as this sunlight intensity starts increasing when it crosses or goes above a certain threshold value the lighting system in the house gets turned off so during evening it gets turned on automatically during early morning it gets turned on automatically also depending on various other requirements for example, in certain parts of the house we want manual control and some parts we have we want automatic control. So depending on that uh, we can program it in that way okay whether we want automatic control or manual control. So basically automatic lighting system is used for street lights okay. So like that or even if in some uh, so auto home automation it is also used so this is automatic lighting system similarly we can take the example of automatic irrigation system so here a uh, uh, sensor is used to measure soil moisture basically a hygrometer it can be capacitive resistive piezoelectric uh, whatever so it measures the soil moisture the moisture levels the water content uh, in the soil the moisture content and when it drops below a certain threshold value the microcontroller it continuously monitors that and when it drops below a th certain threshold value it commands the actuator which in this case can be a rotating motor a valves pumps to start the sprinkler system okay the irrigation system the sprinkler system which drizzles water in the crops okay so this is the automatic irrigation system and when the soil moisture goes above the threshold value then automatically the sprinkler system gets turned off so that is the automatic irrigation system similarly we can use uh, we can have automatic air conditioning system here a temperature sensor will be used which will measure the room temperature and uh, when it is it goes above a certain value the 
air conditioning in the house will get automatically activated turned on using electrical relays or any other electrical actuator it can be turned on and when the temperature goes below a certain threshold value it will get automatically turned off so it can be used accordingly during summer season during winters during autumn rainy season so it can be programmed in different ways the threshold temperatures can be changed can be altered so these are some of the examples of uh, you know uh, systems which involve uh, internet of things so here this embedded system technology is basically used okay so this is uh, all about embedded systems there is a lot more to it uh, here i have just tried to discuss it in a short way so that you can understand it so we have covered wireless sensor networks cloud computing big data and embedded systems so now the internet technology it brings all of these things together okay it's just like different parts of a system and the internet it just connects one system to the other okay it brings all of the you know, the subsystems together to bring the whole concept of iot together okay so this is uh, about the basic technologies iot technologies or iot enabling technologies so here we have discussed about embedded system so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much